uh, middle or the center line of the uh, interchange or the intersection is the 395 meters control area. And that's where most of our studies really uh, get involved with when uh, for those roadways with full um, control access, especially when you are dealing with interchanges. So within this 395 meters, if anything is happening here or an access is being provided, um, that access or these developments need to be supported by a traffic study to the satisfaction of the uh, Ministry of Transportation. And this is pretty much the guideline when it comes to uh, full control of access um, for highways. When you are dealing with uh, King's Highways, the distances are slightly re are to some extent reduced. The A or the uh, 45 control area is still the same. The 400 meters control area is still the same. The 800 meters is still the same. But MTO's um, uh, involvement in the permitting process for traffic studies gets reduced to 180 meters. So if your development is introducing accesses um, within 180 meters of the circle, yeah, that's when you need to involve MTO in the permitting process and you need to get their approval. In a lot of cases, you would have a highway with an interchange and you will have a jurisdiction here. That jurisdiction has to approve your study as well and you're dealing with MTO. So both of them have to be uh, in line with what you're doing. So far, so good. All right. Before diving in more, um, basically, I did skip actually uh, talking about um, intersection spacing um, when it comes to private accesses as well. So, intersection spacing when it comes to private accesses and uh, um, local roadways are a function of the uh, King's Highways mainly. It is either arterials or collectors or local roadways. And MTO does have guidelines here um, in terms of the spacing. The spacing is typically measured from the functional area of the intersection. And the functional area is the, covering the extent of any lanes that open up as tapers or added lanes and so on and so forth. So if you do have a, um, Let's let, imagine if you're having an extra westbound right extra lane that opens up as a storage lane and um, actually turns into the roadway, the distance gets sorted from the taper of that right turn. You can find these um, uh, guidelines still, they are part of the um, highway, uh, the highway corridor management guidelines um, of which the access management guidelines are part of it. Uh, access management guidelines are chapter four of the highway corridor management guidelines. And you'll be able to, you can simply search online and be able to find the whole document and, and scroll through the whole chapter. You will be finding uh, MTO's requirements and then different uh, cases. Uh, but again, it's, it's all involving the uh, King's Highways. For the, well, at least for the first two. Uh, we do have uh, access management classifications or guidelines for because we, we do allow accesses for principal arterials, but at a, an increased spacing. The same concept will apply. You'll be able to find as well the minimal and desirable intersection spacing or roadway spacing from uh, interchanges and by interchange type, whether it's a diamond or a clover leaf uh, interchange. Again, I'm not going through the details of everyone. The, uh, to, to, uh, the whole purpose of going through the guidelines is to show you where you can find the information. Um, you can read these and apply them based on your own specific case. And by the way, guys, in, in traffic engineering or planning, we deal with a lot of documents. Um, there is no way to memorize all of them. But the, the uh, critical thing is to know where you can find the information where you, when you need it. All right, um, I'll give it a 10 minute break.